What's going on, guys? Today we're on Private Wealth and Relationship, and today I have... Morgan. Hey. Hey. Period. <laughs> I'm here. So what's going on? Nothing living. What's up? How was your day? My day was great. It, it was, was busy. It was busy? It was very busy. Busy getting here, huh? Yes. Right. Busy getting here and busy in the beginning, so... So you are, um, I seen that you are a very well-off content creator. Yes. And when I say well-off, I mean like posting consistently. You got your own little themes, like what you do. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, how long you been into content creation? So I started doing content, I will say last year. I started taking it serious towards the end of last year. Mm -hmm. So like around, I want to say maybe November, December. But I started my YouTube channel two years ago. Mm -hmm. And it was just off the top of my head. Like, my friends were like, your personality is good. People can relate to you. Just do it. So mm -hmm. I was like, I'm going to do it. So I started investing in lighting, cameras, and everything. And my first video was um, a Houston vlog. And it went up. So, like, now it's at, like, 5K views, which mm. is crazy. Because I was like, mm, I don't think people going to watch. But people definitely watch. And so then I was like, I want to go, like, deeper into it. So I started looking at TikTok. And... I was looking at Glamazon Tay. She's a YouTuber and she's a content creator. And I was like, well, I could do this. So I started doing my research on how to connect with brands and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then it's been up since there. So you know how to connect with brands? Yeah. Well, how you get involved in that? Hey. That's, what I, that's what I've been you trying to have me drop them gems. Yeah, drop um, them gems. So basically you can either um, tag them if you already have their, you know, their brands and stuff. When you're posting your content, you can tag them in it so they can see it. Mm -hmm. Or you can find out their marketing emails and you can make up a format and send it to the brands and they can contact you so has it ever been like has it been like super successful in that like paying well because i did it a little bit but they gave me like they gave me an app to go on to you know and they approved me but they didn't really go too far in so it depends. So if you do like a gifting, that means that they just give you the products for free. Mm -hmm. So you don't really get paid for that. But if you do a campaign, then they pay you for that and you have to sign contracts and stuff. But with all mine, I sign a contract because I need to have my paper trail. Like mm -hmm. you're not going to play me. Like you're not going to tell me I was supposed to post this, this, that, and the third. No, I'm going to do what it says and I'm going to post it. So it's you, been successful so you far. You dropping gems for real. You know, <laughs> I swear, you know how many content creators I done asked this question to? I mean, a lot, and I'm talking about like not personally, but just through yeah. like social media. They didn't want to give it to me. I don't understand why people gatekeep. Honestly, mm -hmm. I don't. Me personally, I don't mind sharing gems with people as mm -hmm. long as you're not trying to step on my toes. That's where I have a problem with it. I feel mm -hmm. like in the content creating industry, a lot of people feel like people are trying to take something from them. Mm -hmm. But it's money out here for everybody. It's free stuff for everybody. So it's just like, why not? And even if you might not be the perfect fit, somebody else might. So exactly. why not? So. How far you how, how far in you trying to go? As far as I can go. <laughs> All gas, no breaks right now. <laughs> All gas, that's All so you gas, want, no you want this to be your main job? I would hope for it to be, yes. But uh, my nine to five is in social media anyway. So I went to school for uh, mass media communications mm -hmm. and I double majored in African American studies. So I'm technically working already and doing what I want to do. And then content creating is like my side hustle. So it's like it all kind of fit, intertwined. So right now, I'm good where I'm at. But if content creating take off, I was supposed to. Exactly. Oh, baby, I'll be like that. I mean, it can take off. If it you can. Cons how consistent are you? I'm very consistent. I what? post literally every day um, mm. besides the weekends. Because I feel like on the weekends, everybody is like so busy anyway, out and about. And I feel like, especially with my timeline, it's like people just post like when they're going somewhere, they're going out on the weekends. Mm -hmm. It's not really content based. So I like to do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Mm. And I leave the weekends for me to like do my content. And then I'll edit maybe on like a Sunday or a Monday. And then I start posting rapidly after that. Mm. Yeah, you lit. What about YouTube? Whew. So I just got <laughs> back to doing my YouTube because I stopped. I feel like people say you do get a YouTube burnout and I get it. Now you do. Because it's like when you don't see the numbers and you don't see like the engagement, how you want it to be. And it's like I didn't work like five days, five nights trying to edit this video, make it look nice. And ain't nobody looking at it. Like, you know, it gets kind of discouraging. So I told myself I'm going to get back into it. So I posted a video last week. So that's doing good. And I was like, I'm going to post another one next week. So See, the thing is, I can be I can get in like rampage mode with like doing long term content because I can just talk. You know, yeah. sometimes I just make a video where I'm just talking. 
or do some simple because my yeah. everyday lifestyle is the same like no for real mine too yeah it's the same so it's like it ain't gonna it's, it's gonna get better like it's gonna always be a of trip course for sure, yeah the content gonna kind of look in, in the same mm-hmm. style just a different conversation exactly and that's what i was thinking too because i'm like i do the same thing i'm a mm-hmm. mom i work you know repeat like you know what i'm saying it's exactly. nothing spontaneous unless i'm like you know going out of town or like i'm going somewhere nice or i'm you know i'm doing something so it's just like what could I do to make it change? So then that's when I came up with the idea of having a series. So I came up with like a healing journey series on my YouTube channel where mm-hmm. I kind of like talk in my car and talk about how I am like mentally and spiritually and like healing and stuff. Mm-hmm. And that was going good too. So I think I might start that back yeah, up. You should start that back up. I think I am. That's helping all the women out here. It should. <laughs> and it they should. need to watch it. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why you say they need to watch it? Because I feel like as a black woman, Especially, like, for me, like, we deal with so much trauma Mm -hmm. and so many obstacles in life. And I feel like it's just so important to have a backbone and know that people can relate to you. And, like, we all go through it. And, like, therapy is cool. Like, I take therapy every two weeks. Mm -hmm. That's good. (laughs) And I love that. And I journal every night, you Mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And, you know, I believe in, like, you know, the universe and stuff. But I believe in God, too. Like, I listen to a sermon every day. So it's, like, I feel like especially women my age, like around like the mid twenties, early thirties, like they should want to relate to something like that because Mm -hmm. they're not the only one. So exactly. Yeah, exactly. We need that for sure. Um, Mm -hmm. I see you got something about, um, I seen a little series on your Instagram. (laughs) Dating as I'm approaching 30. Yeah. What's what's, (laughs) what's up to that? What made you come up with this series? Um, I kind of turned my trauma into treasure is Mm -hmm. what I call it. Okay. Dating. I feel like my dating years have not been that successful Mm -hmm. and that's okay. Mm -hmm. So I was like, let's make it something fun. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'll be 30 in July. So I was like, let me talk about my dating experiences and things that I'm learning as I'm getting older Mm -hmm. and what I know what to go for and what not to go for. And just, you know, to share gems with the ladies as well as doing skincare products. What's some (laughs) gems for the ladies? Mm. Like what's some you experience that you feel like? Don't ignore them red flags the first time. Okay. That's the first one. Um, also, uh, if he do it one time, he going to do it again. Mm-hmm. The third thing is don't tell everybody your business. <laughs> exactly. Do not tell everybody your <laughs> business. I have learned. I have learned. So. Why? You, why you say, what you learn from it? Whew, it caused drama. It get messy, especially if you go back. Mm-hmm. It gets real messy. And it's just like, why would you tell your business if you knew you was going to go back anyway? Exactly. Mm. <laughs> so just shut up. Just shut up. Just shut up. And always put yourself first. I feel like... As a woman, we always pour into our significant other or our partner before they pour into us. And you don't want to like somebody more than they like you. I just feel like it should be a 50-50 thing. And that's why it's so important to love yourself first. Because if you don't have that within, you pouring into somebody else and they don't give two craps about you. So it's just important. How do you feel about if one person like this person a lot and then the other person don't really like that person? Like, I feel think- like they need to communicate that. Hmm. But if you communicate it, what is what is it like? What that, that gives them a like, choice. They don't want to give up. Then that gives them a choice. But you knew mm-hmm. that they didn't like you that much. So if it end up bad, you can't be mad. Why does the person get mad then? Because there's a lot of people out here get mad about stuff like that. That's because they want to be in love and be with that person so mm-hmm. bad. You think a lot of people out here lonely? Very much so. People are very, I won't say desperate, but mm-hmm. they're infatuated with being in love and having a partner and social media plays a huge role in that. Okay. Like you see girls, you know, going on dates, getting these flowers and stuff and getting treated right now. Like, well, shoot, I'm just settle for this man. Just so I can say I got one. Dang. Okay. Everybody don't need a piece of man. I'm just saying, <laughs> I don't want a piece of man. I need a whole man. <laughs> I feel that. I feel yeah. That. I feel that. So you, do you think the, the relationship hole is going down? No. Not, no, you don't think so due to the social media? No. And I only say that mm-hmm. because I've witnessed so many of my friends getting married recently. Mm-hmm. Like, I went to a wedding last week for my friend. I went to a wedding the month before that. I went to a wedding the month before that. So I'm just like, nah. At first I had doubts, but then I was like, I'm seeing all my friends getting loved on. Like, it's still hope out there for me. Mm-hmm. And for other women. You just got to be patient. It's God's speed. You it's really not be ours. Patient. Yeah. What do you do? You believe in like social media love and um, apps, and when it comes to stuff, do you believe in it? Dating apps are trash. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've tried; they're okay. trash. Um, as far as people sliding in the DMs, that could be successful. 
if y'all vibe right, you know. If you vibe right, if the yeah. chemistry is there. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. as far as like dating apps, mm-mm. people intentions don't be pure, huh? No, they just be trying to, you know, one, two, and then they out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I will say, my god mom, she met her husband on a dating app. So it, was, it could work for some people. It can work. If you got a clear understanding and you, yeah. you can be very transparent. I get it. Yeah, so it can work for some, for sure. but for me, no. <laughs> so in the in the career, like what's what's up for you? Like what what do you feel like is your big goal point? My goal point, um, right now, my goal point is to I wanna get a brand trip deal. So it's basically when they fly out like content creators and influencers like to a different mm, country or a different I, state. You know, I'm I know like, what talking yeah, about. I'm I like, exactly. I'm trying to get in that bag. You know what I'm saying? I know like, exactly what you're I feel like about. I've accomplished like so far I have honestly knocked off a lot within like these four months mm-hmm. of this year. I got two luxury brand deals. Um, I've worked with brands that I wanted to work with. So it's like I've knocked that out. So next I'm like, where's the brand trip at? Or like even like a, you know, like when they have like their events like in different mm-hmm. states, like even one of those. You talking your talk. I know exactly Period. what you're talking about. Yeah. I wanna go to one of them Sony events. Okay. Or- like, you know? they be lit. Like, yeah. when you look at their stories and stuff on Instagram, they be lit at oh, the no. event. So I'm like, I'm trying to go to one of these. <laughs> We it, gonna go. We we gonna go to one and watch. Sure. We going. How you how you unlock the code? Because I'm trying to figure it I'm out. I'm trying to figure it out too. I'm trying to. Take, I don't know, and that's the part that I'm trying to figure out because a lot of them they've been working with these brands like for a long term, mm-hmm. so they built that relationship. So now I'm like, okay, which brand do I really want to like lock in to where they know to contact me and be like, hey, do you want to go on this brand trip? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I've noticed that it's because they're really locked in with like a certain brand or company. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So outside of content, what else do you do? Like model? You mm-hmm. say you do model? What's, yeah, I what's... model sometimes. I, I They say I retired, but I do it for certain people. What you mean you retired because it's been a long time? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, not that long. I did one last year. Uh, what was it, the STL Black Fashion Week? Mm-hmm. I did that fashion show last year. So you walked? Yes, I walked. Yeah, so yeah. I'm a published print and runway model. So mm-hmm. I do it all. Mm-hmm. What's the publish? Publish is when you in a magazine. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. You're talking about that type of pose. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you bought that life. Very much so. So when I, and I have to say that because, you know, it's a lot of girls that say, no shade to them, but it's a lot of girls that say, I'm a model. Well, baby, IG don't count. Mm. Like, what are you, are you in the field? Like, are you really So you in, in the, the field. field? Very much so. Mm. Yeah. So around, from around here? Yeah. So I've done stuff around here and then, um. I walked for a designer called Beyond B. Um, he actually makes the clothes for like sisters on BT and everything like mm-hmm. that. I've walked for him in his clothes. So yeah, I'll be really out here doing it big. <laughs> yeah, you're really doing it big. I do, humbly though. Yeah. <laughs> so where where are you trying to go with all of this? Because we know you, you know you do a lot yeah. based off of what you're saying. But yeah. where are you trying to go? Wherever God takes me, honestly, I've stopped making goals because mm-hmm. I noticed that. It kind of distracts me from what's really going on in the now. Mm. I never was satisfied in the now. And I've started to just let God lead the way and be happy with the now. And then everything kind of falls in my lap. Talk, yo, talk. So I'm at the point now in my life where it's just like, all right, God, if you want me to do this, I'm going to take this leap of faith. And if it works, it works. If it don't, that's cool, too. So I'm just really going with the flow. Going with the flow. How did you get to this level of your life? Like mentally? Yeah, mentally. Therapy. Therapy, <laughs> therapy and prayer. Yeah, therapy, therapy helped me a lot too. Yes. So I agree. Yes. Therapy. But how how long, like, where gave you confidence to want to take this step in therapy? Um, I went through a very traumatic event in my life mm-hmm. and I was very um depressed. I won't say I was like, you know, but um I was in a very, very dark place. Mm-hmm. And my job, they offered free therapy sessions. I got to pick my therapist. um, And I've been with her for about three years now. Mm. And we laid it all out. Like, from daddy trauma, dating trauma, like, insecurities, like, everything. And now, I've grown so much. And we talk about it all the time. Like, it's just amazing how much therapy can really, like, change Mm -hmm. your life. And I try to, like, advocate for that. 
Because people don't, they look at you sideways when you say you went therapy. I'm like, that don't mean you crazy. Right. You know, you just trying to get your mental together. Exactly. You know, that's all. Worked on, work on size of things that you didn't even realize in yourself. Exactly. Exactly. That's what, that's, that's definitely what it helped me. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Because when my brother passed, I felt like I needed therapy. It was a lot of things that mm-hmm. I just felt like I needed to talk about and release and, you know. Yeah. No, it's up true. another side. It does. And, you know, I even noticed, like, I was leaning to more to leaning towards more of like substances and things like that and I'm like I can't do this like I got a child like I can't live like this you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying and it's just like you know you just need one thing to happen and you just like you know what I gotta get it together mm-hmm. and I might look like on the outside I got it together but in the inside I'm like I'm feeling like shit mm-hmm. <laughs> and I had to get myself together do you sure. feel like you balance your life well now oh of course I got like three <laughs> planners it's crazy well, I got damn. three so I got one for like my everyday schedule. Mm-hmm. I got another one for like content scheduling. I got another one for like my son, like whatever he needs to do, or like bills and things like that. So yeah, I'm good now. Yeah, <laughs> I'm real good that's now. Real good. Yeah. So parenting, what is what is parenting like for you? I love parenting. It's you so do? fun. <laughs> like my son, he's he's seven. Mm-hmm. Um, but he is literally my motivation. Honestly, like he mm-hmm. keeps me on my toes. And I got to be a good example for him. And his father is a great example for him as well. Like, we co-parent super well. Mm -hmm. Um, I get along with his fiance. So Mm -hmm. it's just like we all like a blended family. And that's That's all I wanted. I wanted my son to know, even though me and his dad aren't together, we get along. Everybody on both sides gets along. And it's no drama. And he ain't on transport. So we doing good over here. You talking your talk. Um, (laughs) We doing good over here. You You doing good. Real good. Yeah. Communication is key, huh? Very much so. That's dope. Yeah. So being being a mom and trying to function with, like, real reality of life and keeping your mental balance at the same time, is that a a real challenge for you? Or is it, like, you got it together so much to where it's, like, it feels easy? It feels easy. And I will say only because... Like, my son, he'll see me watching a sermon or something. He's like, oh, mommy, are you praying right now? I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah. So he'll join with me. Or if I'm journaling, like, he'll want to journal in his book, too. Um, even when I'm doing content. Then he journal, too? Yeah. How old is he? He's seven. Oh, yeah, you in the game. You like, Yeah, you got yeah, you got to start him early. Start I'm trying to tell you. got to start him early to fix that mental real quick. Um, and I give advice. him, like, an open book to where he can, you know, express himself. I mean, he doesn't, you know, curse or anything. But mm-hmm. if he's not having a good day, I'm like, you can express that. Like, it's okay. Like, mm. if you feeling down, express it. It's fine. Um, even when I'm doing content, he's like, Mommy, are you doing content? What you doing? Mm. I'm like, yeah. He's like, ooh, I want to try. So he has, like, an iPad and an iPhone. So he'll, like, try. I don't let him post nothing yet. I'm very, like, protective of my child. Yeah. Because I, I don't it. even have him, like, on social media or anything. Um, but, you know, like, he'll try to play and do stuff on his phone and stuff, too. So it makes it a good balance because he's, like, more intrigued with what I'm doing. So it's not, like he would be a distraction or what I'm doing would be a distraction. Mm. So I always him. wanted to know, like, because I've seen women bring, like, men around their kids and stuff like that. I want to do, like, do you feel like you have to set a timeline of, like, when you start dating or when you should bring mm-hmm. somebody around your kid? Yeah, me and his dad, before me and his dad, um, I guess I'll say, like, when we officially made it, like, you know, done, done, mm-hmm. we both agreed that if we were dating someone that was serious, we would have a meeting with them first, so mm. all of us go out to dinner or something, or just mm. one on one, and then we would bring them around our son. Mm. So, like, his fiance took me to brunch, and um, that was great. We had fun. <laughs> we had a ball. Um, and then I was like, you know, that's cool. I, I like her. And then she even cooked me dinner one time mm. with all of us there. So I was like, she's all right with me because I love to eat. Um, but yeah, we have it very mutual now. Has he met anybody? He met one. Um, but that's about it. Cause mm. everybody else, I just feel like they shouldn't be around my child. Right, yeah. right, right. I always wanted to know stuff like that. Cause me, I don't be knowing. I'll be like, uh, it's, it's a tight situation for real. Is. And you really don't know people either. Exactly. And you know, people kind of crazy and we don't play about our kids now. So it's like, you really, really got to pay attention to people. You mm. do. So, yeah. Dang, dang, mm-hmm. dang, that's crazy. You ain't never had a um, um, a problem where it was like you felt a certain type of way, like, damn, I was moving too fast when you brought somebody around your kid? Nah, because it was just one person. And we were really locked in, so it was like, I ain't really look at it as a bad thing. Now, when my son brings them up 
randomly because mm-hmm. he still brings them up. I'm like, eh, yeah, Damn, your that's... friend, like your friend. But it's just like you got to really keep it cool. You know what I'm saying? Like it ain't like he like, oh, let's call them or, you know, let's talk to them or where are they at? It's like, oh, mom, remember when such and such? I'm like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Like I just keep it real calm and collective because it's like it is what it is. I think that is the scariest part when a kid build a relationship with mm-hmm. Damn, it's like you invested all this time and now it's just not working. Mm-hmm. So now I'm like really cautious with that. Like I don't play. I do not play. You have to, <laughs> yeah. you have to be. Damn, damn, damn. <laughs> got I'm you with that one. Look at you. Yeah. I got you with that one. No, because I? I, I think I genuinely think about <laughs> stuff like this all the no, time. No, because it's a serious thing to think about. Like you just can't. I don't. I don't like when people have any and everybody around their kids. Because mm-hmm. you just don't know people. Like, you might have had a relationship with them, but, like, you don't know how people are around kids. Mm. And that's why I just be real cautious about who be around my child mm. in general. Like, I don't play that. So you say you've been through um, a lot of stuff. Do you feel like people should try and work on them things themselves or just go for counseling or therapy? Mm. It depends on... Your what mental state, honestly, and mm-hmm. what it is, mm-hmm. because I took accountability. A lot of people can't really take accountability mm-hmm. for their actions or what mm-hmm. has occurred. So I took the initiative to do that. Mm-hmm. But I think that people should go to therapy first. Mm-hmm. But I also feel like people should pick their therapist as well, because I feel like that affects a lot of people. When they go to therapy, they're like, oh, well, I ain't really like the person I had. And I'm like, well, why didn't you really, you know, do your background check on them or, like, see if you can connect? Because, like, for instance, mine, like, she's a black woman. She's married. You know what I'm saying? And, like, I knew her background. And I was like, I can connect with her because she would understand where I'm coming from. I'm like, no shade. But I was like, I'm not going to get this kind of person because, like, you don't understand what I've been through. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? You can't relate to me. So, like, why would I do that? Mm. Are you invest in yourself? Very much so. How often? <sighs> Every time I get paid, every what you time mean? You get paid, you every talk. time I get paid, I buy myself something nice. Oh, My oh. mom taught me that. She said, mm-hmm. I don't care if it's a pair of socks. I don't care if it's a luxurious purse. Just to feel good, huh? Buy yourself something nice. You have to. Mm-hmm. I, I feel that. I feel that. I feel that. How How is like relationships with your mom and stuff like that? You feel oh, like great. Good? That's my girl. That's my girl. Mm. I can talk to my mom about anything and not feel judged. Um... She makes me feel so comfortable. Um, I've seen how strong she was as a woman. Mm-hmm. I've seen the things that she's been through. And so even though she'd be like, don't look at me as a role model, I do. Because she's just so strong. And, mm-hmm. like, she done been through a lot. And it's just amazing to me how she's still ten toes and just, like, bossing up and doing her own thing. Mm-hmm. And especially, like, having two kids and you did it damn near by yourself. Like, she was married to my dad for a while. And they divorced. She did it all by herself, and I was just, like, amazed. Like, I was in college. My uh, brother was in high school at the time, and I'm like, girl, like, you really doing this? Like, this crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she remarried again, and then, you know, they divorced later as well. But she ended up buying a whole house. I'm like, girl, Sheesh. okay. Like, I see you. Yeah, she bought that life. So, yeah, and she be laughing at me because I always be calling her, like, big baller. So I'm like, I ain't baller. She be like, girl, shut up. I'm <laughs> like, nah, like, you really, like, out here. And it's just amazing now to see my mom – she put two kids through college. Um, we both are very successful. And it's finally good to see her, you know, like, let her hair down and mm. just live. Like, she's done her part. She really has. And it's just like, I'm so happy to see my mom glowing up. It's just amazing. Mm. Yeah, that's my girl. That's lit. That's lit. That's lit. <laughs> does, does that, do you feel like you learn a lot from her, um, from watching her, you know, be married and get divorced yeah, and stuff like that? I learned a lot from my mom and my dad and the women in my families on both sides. Um, My mom taught me that you really don't need nobody for nothing. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's okay to ask for help. I have a problem with asking people for help. Me too. And she's like, it's okay. Like, that's what family is here for and that's what support's for. But I always feel like if I ask somebody for help, I feel like I got to give something back in return. Like, I be feeling like a guilt trip when I ask people for help. Mm -hmm. Or it's like if I ask them to help me with something, I'm like, okay, well, let me hear you pay them back like right now. Cause you ain't finna have that in my ear, like you know you owe me. No, mm. but I'm glad that she gave me that security, security to where it's like it's okay to ask for help. And I like that my dad has taught me, you know, don't depend on no man for nothing. <laughs> okay, 
Okay, One thing right. my daddy has always taught me is never depend on no man for nothing. Right. And my dad spoiled me from the day I was born. And he was just like, you ain't never got to ask a nigga for shit. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, bitch. And so even when I see like my friends, like even if they date people, I'm like, how you be so comfortable asking a man for some money? I'm like, I can't do it. They you like, don't think he's supposed to provide? He is, but I don't, it's something about like me asking a man for money and I feel like they want something in return. Like I feel like I got to mm. give them something. Like I feel like that's an attachment or something. And I know it's not because I do want a man to provide, mm -hmm. but I also don't want a man to feel like I need him. It's like, I right. want you, but I don't need you. I get you. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's where I'm like stuck in between right now. Like that balance. So, but yeah. Would you let a man lead? Of course. That's what I want. I'm tired of being the big boss. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I make my own money. I take care of myself. I pay my own bills. I'm ready for somebody to step in and be like, I got you. Mm -hmm. All right. Come on in. Because mm -hmm. it ain't cheap over here. <laughs> I'm just saying. This girl, hella funny. <laughs> you hella funny. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. So, how you feel like you finna um, transition like your your content? I think now I'm gonna get more advanced in editing mm -hmm. for content wise for like Instagram and Facebook and stuff. I feel like the way I edit on YouTube is completely different from how I edit on Instagram and other social media platforms. Mm -hmm. And also, like, I've been studying, like, other people to see, like, what they do. Mm -hmm. um, and they've taught me, like, some little tricks to do on, like, cap cut and stuff and how to make, like, you know, your little item pop up and pop out and make mm. the little FX sounds and all that. And I'm like, okay, I can do that, you know. And I'm very creative. So it's like I'm open to learning right. about that. So I feel like once when I really start, like, pushing that out more, as well as, like, reaching out to more brands, I feel like that's so important and building a tight relationship with brands. Mm -hmm. That's where I see myself now because I'm, like, I'm already getting paid by brands, right? So it's, like, getting campaigns that are, like, consistent to where, like, I'm getting paid every week, every month. Like, that's what I want next. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not here for the money, but I'm here to, like, if I'm putting in this hard work, like, I need to be getting paid. That's how I'm trying to get on. I ain't gonna lie to you. You talking your talk. Period. That's the next step for me. Yeah. I've been talking about this for like. Well, what? Which way now? I mean, I, don't, I got a couple, a little couple brands, but it ain't no real paid brands, you know. But you I'm, I'm cool somewhere? with the yeah. having fun, enjoying, enjoying it, doing it. You know, I'm cool with that. And that's how I look at it. Honestly, if you can't do it for the money. You got to actually enjoy it. The money going to be there and the right. money going to come. Right. And I feel like a lot of people now, I've noticed they want to just do content creating for the money. You can't do it for that because you're going to mm -hmm. get burnt out. Exactly. You got to really enjoy it because you got to think on your feet. Like you got to really be creative because these brands, we want you to put out stuff like within a week. So it's like, what That's can light. you it is for us, but not for other people. <laughs> right, 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 right. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. Like, when people be like, oh, I need something to do next week, I'm like, bet, I could do that. You know what I'm saying? But for other people who just in it for the money, they're like, well, shit, what do I need to do? What do I need to edit? How should I put my camera? Where's my lighting? What should the caption be? You know what I'm saying? Like, they really have to think deep into it. But when you are natural and you like doing what you're doing, it's a piece of cake. It's just too easy for me. And I be feeling like, when I see, it's, I think what it is, maybe it is, like, a social media block like it's like when i see all of these other content creators doing it i'm like man that's that's something i could do two minutes i'm trying to tell you i literally record edit and post every day mm. every day that's lit but that's how i know i'm actually enjoying it i don't get tired like i'm i, be <laughs> I don't get tired i'll be excited no for real like i'll be so excited like when brands send me stuff because i'm like oh i could do this i could do that like i could be outside or i could be here mm -hmm. let me do this but again other people who just doing it for the money they wouldn't know exactly they wouldn't know what um fulfills you internally oh self-love mm -hmm. peace you get yourself words of affirmation every day? Every day. Mm -hmm. I look in the mirror when I'm looking a mess in the morning <laughs> and be like, I am beautiful. Right. I am wealthy. I am healthy. I am somebody. Mm -hmm. So that's how you keep your, your mental balance? Very much so. Mm -hmm. Because I had a hard time with loving myself when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten to the point now where I'm like, girl, you look good. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not even like a cocky kind of thing. It's just a very confident thing like mm -hmm. 
And I give off that aura to people. Like, I love when people are like, I just love your energy. Like, you're just so cool. Like, you real, you fun. Like, you lay back, but you funny. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, and I love that because that was something that I was when I was a little girl. And then as I got older and I dealt with, like, trauma and things, like, it kind of took it away. So I feel like now I'm, like, back in my prime, right? Like, I'm back in my prime. She in her prime. Yeah, I'm in back bag, in my huh? prime. I'm in my bag. <laughs> so it's like, I feel how I look uh -huh. good. So it's like, I have no complaints with it. So it's like, within is what keeps me going. No, you talking, you don't talk, for sure. Yeah. So before I end this, I need you to give <laughs> off something very, very positive for the ladies and <laughs> the man that can take some from it. So you gotta look at this camera right here. This The one? middle one. This one. Yeah. Mm. Talk your talk. You so funny. Now you want me to drop some gems. Um, I would say keep it positive, sweetie. Always. Because you got to. You got to keep it positive in life. Um, Always remember you are what you put out. So if you put out positivity, you're going to receive that. If you put out negativity, you're going to receive that. And always be kind to yourself and kind to others. That's what I got to say. Mm, I rocks with it. <laughs> <laughs>